In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the throttle body on your Nissan Rogue located on the top side of your engine. Ensure the ignition is in the off position before removing any electrical connectors from the throttle body. Right up underneath the bumper here, there is going to be a drain plug for our radiator. You can use a flathead or a Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and slowly open that up. Have your drain pan ready to go. Now with the radiator pretty much drained out, you want to go ahead and take your drain plug, inspect the O-ring on here, make sure that is in good condition. If that is flattened out, torn, or shredded in any way, you have to replace that now. Ours is in good condition. Let's go ahead and reinstall this here. We'll snug that up into position here. Once that bottom's out, just give it a little bit more. Now we can go ahead and just wipe down the residual here. Use a 10 millimeter socket, loosen and remove this bolt. Use a pair of pliers. I want to bring this hose clamp back a little bit. Use your 10 millimeter socket to loosen this bolt right here for this hose clamp. Good and pull that out. Then we can go ahead and remove this hose here. Go ahead and set this aside. Use our eight millimeter socket to loosen the hose clamps on either end of the tube here. Now that we have our hose clamps loose, let's go ahead and disconnect our mass airflow sensor here. Just pinch the little connector on the top, the little tab, and pull that connector off. Disconnect that. Just tuck that off to the side. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen and remove this nut, securing our air box to the strut tower. On the front side of the air intake, there's gonna be three plastic retainer clips. Use your trim tool to go ahead and pop these out. Set those aside. They want to separate the intake tube from the air box right here. There's little plastic tabs down here. So I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver to gently go down, open up that retainer clip, pop that out, twist that, set that aside. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen the nuts on our J bolt for our battery hold down. Once those are loose, you should be able to twist out the J-bolt. Pull this up and remove it. Use your 10 millimeter socket. Gonna loosen the battery terminals. Disconnect these and remove the battery. Remove this battery tray insert. Using a 13 millimeter socket, let's loosen the bolt for the battery tray base.
remove that bolt from the ground strap here. Go ahead and set these aside. On the back side of the battery tray, I'm going to go ahead and loosen and remove this 10 millimeter bolt, holding the air box in place. Around the perimeter of the battery tray, the wiring harness is clipped in. We're just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers. Go ahead and pop these out. At this point here, the tray is movable, so we can pull this up a little bit. Attached to the air box here, there is your mass airflow sensor harness that has a uh, retainer clip on it. I want to go ahead and separate that from the air box, just using our trim tool. Follow that down. There's one more down below, and then there's a vent tube. We're going to separate as well. Now that we have those removed, let's go ahead and lift up on this box. Separate that. With this tube separated, we can now remove this from the throttle body. air box set that aside using a number five allen wrench or allen key there are four bolts around the perimeter of the throttle body what we're going to do is just break those free first just to loosen them we're not going to remove them yet With all four of those broken free, there's an electrical connector on the back side here. We want to pinch the tab and pull that connector off of the throttle body. Pop that off. Go ahead, loosen and remove the four bolts now. And the reason why we started by just breaking these free, we want to make sure that we didn't have any damage potentially caused to the intake flange over here. So you just break them free. Now we can go ahead and use our other tools to remove them completely. On the bottom side, we have our coolant tubes right here. Use your 
pliers, move those clamps back. Now I'm gonna try and break these free, twist them off. Now just to remember which hose goes where, I'm just going to use a Sharpie marker and I'm going to put in on the inboard side for that hose so I don't get confused on our reassembly. body removed, go to remove the gasket that is stuck to the intake portion here. Get wiped down the surface here where our new gasket is going to go. At this point here, take your throttle body. I want to go ahead and install the two hoses here. Feed this down in a position. Don't forget your gasket. I'm going to line this up. And I'm just going to get one of these bolts started for now. Now with the one bolt started, you now go ahead and grab another bolt, line that up. Slide that gasket over in a position and get the other three started by hand. And we're going to go ahead and just snug these down gently in a crisscross pattern. our ratchet. What we want to do is when that bolt is snug, we just want to bring it up just a little bit more. We want to make sure that it's tight, but not super tight. on the back side here, line that up, push it on, you feel it and hear it snap into place. Let's go ahead and feed our intake tube down and in a position. Let's go ahead and feed our air box down in a position. As you're feeding this down, there is a peg on the bottom that needs to line up into a grommet. Get that lined up. Line up the intake tube over here. At the same time, we need to get this lined up over here onto this stud. 
Now we have this mount lined up here. We have our lower mount lined up. We have the peg in the bottom here, and we have our intake tube lined up and installed on the box itself. Install the nut on the top here. With the battery tray up, get that back bolt installed, and we'll go ahead and snug that down. This point here, just install our clips and tubes where they came out of. And go ahead and install our mass airflow sensor connector right here. Line that up, press it on. Let's go ahead and get our battery tray lined up here. Get all of our bolts started. Don't forget to install the ground strap here on the battery tray base here. Yeah, let's go ahead and snug those down. Now when tightening down the ground strap here, you want to make sure that it doesn't twist and tear off. Install your wire harness back into the battery tray. Just pop it in the clips as you go around. You can sit in your battery tray. You have three pins here that need to line up. Before tightening up these clamps here, I want to make sure that the hose is lined up. Now there's a little arrow right here that needs to line up with this tab, as well as over here, there's a little notch with a little nub on the air box itself. Simply going to grab that tube and just twist it accordingly. Make sure that lines up and then we can go ahead and tighten those clamps down. Once you feel those clamps snug down, you should be pretty good. Go ahead and line up that box here. I'm gonna slide this into the intake tube, put this nub in the rubber grommet. Push that down and into place. Install your bolt right here. Get that started by hand, snug that down. Now we can look at the clamp in the back, we'll focus on that, and we'll snug that down. Let's get install the tube right here. Slide that into position. Go ahead and reconnect your battery terminals and we'll tighten those down. I'm going to go ahead and install the J hook into the ports and we'll go ahead and snug those nuts down.
Now you don't want to over tighten this here. You want to try and tighten these down evenly. Once you feel that get snug, double check the back one. Once that's just secure where the battery is not moving around, neither is the bracket. And you're all set. Just gonna lower this down into position. Line this end up here with our air box. Line up this lower tube, insert that. You can install your plastic retainer buttons here. I want to go ahead and fill up our radiator here. Going to use the appropriate coolant required from the manufacturer. Okay. Now at this point here, once we have our radiator filled up, I'm going to go ahead and remove our fill tools here. Go ahead and get our radiator cap installed. Let's go ahead and fill up our expansion tank. Now on the passenger side of the engine, you're gonna find the expansion tank here. I'm gonna go ahead and add coolant to this here. There is a max and min line on the side of the tank. So you wanna go ahead and slowly fill this here and watching that line. Now our max line right now is the actual seam on the tank. There's a max line right there. Min or minimum is at the lower portion of the tank. So we went ahead and filled to that seam. And go ahead, and remove our funnel, put on that cover. Now at this point here, you wanna go ahead and start up the vehicle, let it run for about 15, 20 minutes, let the engine warm up. Then at that point there, you wanna go ahead and check the expansion tank here. If that has dropped down, the level has dropped down, go ahead and open this up and add accordingly to this tank here. Never open up the radiator cap when it's hot. Now let's go ahead and get the vehicle ready for the throttle body relearning procedure. Battery voltage must be at least 12.9 volts at idle. The transmission must be in park if it's a automatic transmission or neutral if it's a manual transmission. All electrical loads must be turned off. Headlights, air conditioning, stereo, and all of those components. For vehicles with daytime running lights, apply the parking brake before starting the engine. Steering wheel must be in the neutral straight ahead position. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and start up the vehicle, let it run at idle for about 10 minutes, let the engine get up to operating temperature. the accelerator pedal relearn position learning procedure. We wanna go ahead and make sure that your foot is not on the gas pedal. We'll go ahead, insert the key into the ignition. We we'll wanna go ahead and turn it to the on position, but do not start the vehicle. Do this for two seconds. Go ahead, turn it back. Wait 10 seconds. After that 10 seconds, we're going to repeat that same process one more time. Turn the key back and off. Throttle valve closed relearn procedure. With the accelerator pedal released, turn the key to the on position. Do not start it. Turn the ignition system off and listen for the throttle valve to move within 10 seconds. We could hear that underneath the hood. You've now completed the procedure. Throttle valve open relearn procedure. With the accelerator pedal released, turn the ignition system on, but don't start the engine and wait for three seconds. 
completely depress and release the accelerator pedal five times each within five seconds. Wait seven seconds and depress the accelerator pedal for approximately 20 seconds. Hold the accelerator pedal for 20 seconds. Once the fault indicator light begins flashing again, after about 10 seconds, immediately release the accelerator pedal. At this point here, we can go ahead and start the engine. You want to let it run for about 20 to 30 seconds. Our idle right now is very good. It's coming down a little bit. At this point here, we want to go ahead and rev the engine two to three times to make sure that the engine returns to its normal idle status. Our relearn procedures are all now completed. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.